Welcome to in Welcome to Impact Wrestling. Now, I'm going to tell you what was good about the show and what I thought might be good going to the next couple of weeks. And then I'm going to tell you what pissed my ass off about this show and that this show, for me, it is out. It is rage-inducing. Now, I want to say there were some things that were good in the show. The intro has been redone. Now, was it done correctly? I don't know. You guys can choose for yourself if you like seeing a little bit of TNA shown in between a little bit of impact because that was the intro, intro to the show. They mixed the 20-year anniversary of the very beginnings of TNA with the very important parts of Impact Wrestling now. I think it's not a great intro, but it's not a bad intro either. It makes sense to mix what is from the past to what's with the present. I'm just saying that. Now, the match that I felt was the best match of the night. That is Alex Shelley versus Trey for a spot in Ultimate X. This was the right match to put at the right time in this show. They made it very clear Alex Shelley has been training Trey for the last couple of years. Trey has been wanting to learn more from a more seasoned veteran. It was a nice thing to see that they said this and when they first opened, you can see them shaking hands. Was this match good? Yes, it was. It was very physical, very fast paced. People who like high spots are going to love this. People who also like a little bit of submission is also going to like it there too because there was a good amount of submission. Did they slow down enough to make the moves mean something? No, but it does not mean it was bad. For most people, they will be fine with the very fast pace of the match. In the end, I thought Alex Shelley might win, but it was Trey. Due to the fact that Trey loves the current championship of the exhibition. I think it's mainly due to the fact of his mother. That's the reason why he wants it. And I really do wish that Tom had iterated that and said the reason he loves his title, he grew up loving Impact, and his mother, it, it always encouraged him to follow his dream. And I think that should have been mentioned, but due to the fact it's probably still very sensitive to him, that his mother only recently died in the last, I don't remember how many months. And it must still be hard for him. That's the reason why they're not mentioning. And that's understandable. But I kind of wish it was mentioned because it really helped. But due to the fact of her passing, it makes perfect sense. No, it wasn't her. It was his grandmother, I believe. And then his mother. I believe both of them have now passed away. So it's a hard thing for him. So it's understandable why she's not mentioned. Now, the next match that I felt was okay, but there seemed to be a little bit off, and that's Chelsea Green versus Jordan Grace. Jordan looked like a monster. I want so badly to see Jordan Grace go against Camille from NWA, and I know I'm sure many people who watch this show and know I used to do reviews of NWA, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want to do NWA reviews. It's just that lately I have not been myself, so I have not really seen the product. When I feel better, I will be going back to doing this. The I really want to go back to doing it, but due to the fact that I have not been myself, I, I had to let it go for a little while. Not because I don't like it. I do love USA and I do love power. i am just been under a bit of stress and I didn't want to compound it by trying to do a show that I just did not have the interest doing it. That's the reason why I haven't done NWA. I haven't even seen the product, even though I want to. I've been off, and I've also been busy. There's certain things I've been doing in the background that you don't know about that I've been very busy with, so I just couldn't do it. So when I get a chance, I will be going back to NWA. Believe this, you will be seeing the NWA Power and USA reviews again. Just once I'm not so busy and not so stressed out a little bit. But I really want to see Jordan Grace go up against Camille. That would be an interesting match. Now, did this match feel all right? No, it felt a little off. I, I've seen them wrestle each other before. 
And it's not like they don't have chemistry, but it felt like there was something off. Maybe Chelsea was telegraphing a little bit more of her moves than Jordan was. Or Jordan was telegraphing her moves a little more than Chelsea was. I don't know which one it was, but it felt like there was something off with the match. Now, this is supposed to be... I'll give it to you like this. The Queen of the Mountain, I understand it. I understand why they're doing it. And I truly do hope that setting something up with Gail Kim to take the place of Jeff Jarrett and making it about her. If they don't, I think the match will not be as good as it should be. Because every time when Jeff Jarrett was involved and it was about him, whether you liked it or not, it was important. So they need a Jeff Jarrett stand-in. And I'm really hoping Gail Kim is it. So I understand why they did this. That's what they did last week. Now they're doing it this week. And in this respect, next week when we have Evans versus Mia Yim, I understand it. They got to do it. They don't want to put steals in that position because they don't want to job out the champion, which I'm fine with. It's a good thing they did it. So in the end, Grace wins. But I still feel like it was something off. Now, Shira and Raj versus Morrissey and Gunta. Gunja. Sorry, Gunja. Now, here's where it gets a little difficult to say that this is good. Not because it was a bad match. It wasn't that Shira did a bad job or Raj did or Morrissey or Gunja did. The question is, is this going to get Gunja over? That's what this is all about. Will it get Gunja over? Because he's another Indian wrestler who has come to Impact Wrestling who has a lot of interest, but it counts on how they book him. And what they do with him. They have thrown now two Indian wrestlers at him that have been known to work with Impact Wrestling. But the question is going to be, what does this give him? Now, yes, he can have a singles match with Raj. And he got the singles match with Shear eventually at Slammiversary. That would be understandable. Or you could do Shira first and then set it up that Raj will be the end game for him at Slammiversary. Which I understand. You could set that up in the next month. That will work. But it's got to start next week. Because you got about, what, five weeks to go? Five and a half weeks? No. What's the day? The 26th? I say about almost five weeks. Maybe five. Going next week. So they got to start setting it up so Gunja could finally have the match against Raj at Slammiversary. It's got to culminate there. It's got to mean something. Finally, Vons by Design. Versus them boys and Josh Matthews. And I know I'm not putting any images in these videos. Until Impact does a better job with the camera work. Unless it's something very important. And I was able to catch it. I'm not doing it. But I will tell you this. For anyone who doesn't like Josh Alexander. <laughs> I'm laughing at you. Every time you say something stupid, I just laugh at you now because you're silly. Because you're putting so much effort in trying to make someone care about what you say. <laughs> I don't give a damn. It makes me laugh. Now, was the match good? Yes. Seeing the them boys do a good job, it was fine. Seeing Eric Young do a decent job was fine. Seeing that Eric Young again gets to win is a good thing. Yes, I would rather that they keep Josh and him separate as much as possible. And yes, you did have one of the Briscoes take the pin. It wasn't Josh. It's fine. I just hope they continue rebuilding Eric Young so when he goes to the match of anniversaries in about five weeks, it will feel important. So, what we got here was a good match. Was a, well, good set of matches. Some good building when it came to Diana Perrazzo talking. You see that um, the exhibition had, they had, they had the chance to talk, particularly what happened after Trey McGill won his match that, Kenny King started jab draw jabbing and Blake Christian, Blake Christian had a chance now to go up against, well, seeing that Blake 
has an opportunity next week to go up against Kenny King for his position in Ultimate X. It's all right. But I don't know if they're going to let him get it. it. Actually, I believe it would be a good thing that they switch with Kenny because honestly, I'd rather see Blake get built up the next five weeks than Kenny King due to the fact he's working with Honor No More. That could go to someone else. And they could build him up if they're able to. So the show generally was not bad. But now, this is where I'm going to tear that shit apart because of the two matches that happened on this show that piss my ass off to no end. And if you don't agree with me, you... Give me a reason why I'm wrong. You better give me a good reason why I'm wrong. Because I will tell you, this was wrong. They should have saved this for Slammiversary. First match of the two. Havoc versus Marsha Slamovich. I am so mad. I knew that either they're going to job out a Havoc who supposedly is trying to build herself back up to feel important like she needs to be because they're saying that she's nothing but a jobber. And this taste of a sour note of what happened with her and Nevaeh. If you guys were him. Breathe. Nevaeh and Havoc in 2020. What was that? Trying to build Havoc back up to make him be, be important. In the end, they turned Nevaeh heel on Havoc. And then Nevaeh left the damn company without resolving anything. That was bullshit. I can understand she didn't want to stay in the company. Or they didn't want to re-sign her or sign her. It don't make a difference. Seeing nothing was resolved, generally it felt empty. Now what do we get? We get Marsha Slamovich going against a Havoc where you could have built this very well for Marsha Slamovich. If anyone thinks that this is another coming of Goldberg with Marsha, bullshit. She is not Goldberg because she's not booked like Goldberg. She's not being booked like it. She's being booked like a woman who just comes in, kills somebody, and that's it. There's no sign of her in the back. There's no real promos of her in the, in, at all. And they don't even have to say she needs to say anything. She just needs to be shown. She needs to be seen in the back. And they try to do a promo with her and she walks away. They did that with freaking Goldberg. That is why Goldberg was so cool. Because it wasn't the fact that he just beat everybody and left. It's that they made him a mysterious guy that didn't talk much. That when he was shown, he would just walk away. She's just there. She's been floating. And now, instead of building her up for the next five weeks to go up against Havoc, you don't do that. You have her job out Havoc like she was freaking nothing. Havoc's like this. Marsha's like this. The match barely lasted eight minutes. Maybe seven at the most. And many people would say, well, that shows she's a Goldberg. Bullshit, she's a not. I'm sorry. She's not. That doesn't mean she's Goldberg just because she beat Havoc. It's just that shows that they job out Havoc all the time. Tell me they haven't jobbed out Havoc over the last four months on and off. Yes, they have. And guess who? To Tasha Steeles. They jobbed her out to Tasha. Did you forget, guys, did you forget the match they've had? Hmm? She got jobbed out to, to, to Tasha Steeles. Do you actually believe that she's going to look good over Marsha Slamovich? No. They jobbed her ass out. And then worse, they jobbed her ass out on regular Impact TV. Oh. Instead of next five weeks of making it mean something where you don't even have to have Marsha fight Rosemary or fight Black Taurus or even Crazy Steve. You could, you could just have her be around and let Havoc or Rosemary harass her. Not going to the undead realm, just facing her and she walks away laughing. 
and they try to prove to her how dangerous they are by beating up everybody else. You could have done that with other women. You could have brought women in and made Marsha mean something. No. Just imagine it's over. I just, this shows how bad the booking is. That you have a good wrestler who is being booked as a dominant woman, but you don't give her anything to work with. And if anybody says she's still Goldberg, you don't see it. That's stupid. Like I said, if anybody remembers on WCW, Goldberg was not just going in every single time killing somebody and then leaves. He was in the back too. He may have not talked. He didn't need to talk. He just needed to be seen. When was the last time you saw Marsha Slamovich in the back on Impact TV? Not B-T-I. Impact TV. You can't say it because she wasn't there. So shut the fuck up. Now, here's the second thing that enraged me beyond anything that should have been saved for the pay-per-view. Kaz versus Chris. Frankie Kazarian versus Christopher... Well, Chris Saban. I'm about to say Christopher Daniels. That would have made me even more angry. Chris Saban. Guys. You got two guys that legitimately were probably there almost at the point when the doors were open for the company. They've been both running and wrestling, both Kaz and Saban, for more than 18, 19, now 20 years. They're well known across New Japan Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Noah, Impact Wrestling. Now, Kaz is in AEW on and off, I guess. He's, not, he's allowed to be able to go wherever he wants if he's there right now. I think he might still be working in, in AEW a little bit, maybe doing tapings. But the point is, Kaz is an impact. And instead of setting this up for Slammiversary for two of... <sighs> Breathe. I'm actually tired. And I'm angry at the same time. You don't want to be tired and angry at the same time. You feel loopy. And then you're angry that you're loopy. <laughs> you got two originals that have been there since easily within the first couple of years of the company that can be called originals. And instead of it making it important at the most important pay-per-view you have, that's 20 years in the making and a story that these two had when they first started Impact A in TNA saying that both, well, Kaz saying that he is the future of pro wrestling. The other one saying no, and I'll prove to you not. And they have one of the most important matches of the company's history that is remembered even to freaking today. That Aiden English, Matthew Rinwall himself said, well, I was beginning to try and break into the company. Well, not the company, but into wrestling industry. I see them. I remember that match. And instead of you setting this up for the next five weeks, if Kaz is not working on AEW TV and he's going from one place to another, who said he can't be paid to do the damn thing? And set up what needs to be done going into Slammiversary. No. You have the freaking match now, which was a good match. And then you have, due to the fact that what happened last week, Anna No More was angry. Due to the fact of what Scott Demore said, they're even more angry. So there's no way that the match was going to be ended. So they go in and whoops both their asses. Because you're going to see the thumbnail of this. Of the, come. I am so mad. That this couldn't have been built within five weeks. When you could have made this mean something. Alex Shelley said. In the last pay-per-view. I wanted something to feel special. And he had his match. With. A with a Jay Wright, well, Jay White, the one he trained, he wanted to feel special. Look what happened. No, sorry. Chris Saban also wanted to prove that he was the gold standard, and he had his moment as well. But now, two OGs 
who could have been built into something special, just had part of their match already shown, and they got their asses beat by a faction that just wants to get the damn tag belts. That's going to happen in a slam reversary, but their match is not happening. This is why I get angry at Impact Wrestling. When you see the damn camera work, where most of the time, they're so dumb, they're catching people's backs. And they zoom in while catching people's backs like this. Like WWE. It's ridiculously dumb that this company used to understand how to book people and how to use to do the camera. I am an amateur podcaster when it comes to pro wrestling. I may have been doing this practically almost 10 years. In July, it'll be 10 years for me. But I'm still considered an amateur, even though I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm still learning. But Impact Wrestling, after 20 years, who's had people that's come in from WCW, ECW, WWE, know how to film the shows, know how to book the shows, they act like this. They put on a decent Show, taking away from those two freaking matches. I don't understand. Why are they acting like Jekyll and Hyde? I do not understand. This is the reason why I'm putting no images in these videos anymore. I'm not even doing my intros anymore until they straighten their shit out. Because this is frustrating. I can't capture images for you guys to see what I'm talking about. So you really see that I'm not lying about what I'm saying. But then, it's like, why, when you guys watch the show, are you satisfied with this? This! And I've heard people say, oh, it's all right. People on Twitter, who gives a fuck about Twitter? What about you? You're at home. If you're not going to them, going over to the arena, don't you want really good viewing of your show? I'm not going to stop doing these reviews. If anybody says stop watching the damn show, you don't like it, fuck you. I'm a wrestling podcaster. I make no money, but I want to speak my opinion in hoping one day that someone from Impact will look at either someone who's been inspired by me to actually go off because I'm not saying I haven't inspired somebody. I'm not the be all end all, but someone inspires somebody just to do one thing and they could become a success. And maybe they'll say something and they'll say, damn, maybe we should review what we're doing wrong and get it right. Sometimes you speak your mind, people do listen. <sighs> I've exercised my demon, I'm tired. Peace.